guys. Welcome, come in. How are you? Uh, the first thing I would like to ask you is uh, we see you all the time laughing, uh, smiling even in the, the night that you hurt your arm. Uh, after all, you went to the hospital, you were crying from the pain, but you were still smiling. Uh, what is the secret power, let's say, from, for your positive energy and way of thinking? I think um, uh, when something happens, it's always uh, for a reason. I think this is the most important thing. Um, if something bad happened, maybe uh, after something good will happen. Um, so I think uh, I believe always in the good things. So even when something is bad, maybe after it will be good for some reason. Mm -hmm. Your motto, uh, according to my research, is that uh, look at the stars, but keep your feet on the ground because you live uh, only once. Um, this is, I think it's a good quote because um, I think everybody must have dreams, uh, desire of, of something and you must look always and have a bit ambition, for example, look up. But always uh, you have to stay humble when you reach it or when you're going with everything is going good. It's really easy to, to say, ah, I'm good or, you know, I'm amazing. But no, you always have to be, um, be shy, be humble and know where, uh, where you come from. I think um, this one uh, is a, it was a good lesson from my, from my parents. Because uh, I was really young and everybody was saying like directly, oh, he's going to be a big star, big star in Holland. And my parents were saying, easy, stay calm, you know. So I think it was a good lesson for my parents. It's easy to say it, but it, is it easy to, to achieve it, being no. humble? And it's really, uh, really difficult. Uh, it's also um, with your friends, your parents, the environment around you uh, who's going to uh, say it to you because when you have friends who's going to say, oh, you are a big star or you're doing good, you're the best, and maybe you're going to believe it and you're not there yet. So um, it's also really important to have friends who, who are saying the truth with you, like you have to work hard, keep your feet on the ground, and, uh, but you can look up, you know. So uh, I think the environment is really important. Have you ever reached the point that you said uh, that you thought that you were something different, that you were really are? Yeah, in the beginning, uh, in the beginning, they told me, oh, I'm in the new uh, Rijkaard. Uh, they put me with big players and I was uh, only 18 years old. And I was saying by myself, no, 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 um, stay calm because there comes also a moment when you're going to play bad and then everybody's going to have critics. And uh, so I was really uh, calm in this moment. And uh, I think when something's something were going bad, I could always say like this, I told you, and um, it's normal, you know, one, one career is not going up, only up. Sometimes you have to go down to, to go up. You talked before about uh, ambitions. What are your ambitions and what is your inspiration? Now my ambition is uh, to make Pauk better uh, as a team, as a club, uh, because I think we are growing even if it's a little bit, little bit, because you cannot make big steps, you know, it's a process. And I think Park is on his, uh, on his way to, to reach the level where it, uh, where it w wants to go. Uh, for example, always to be in Europe. This year we want to win the playoffs to, to, to go in the Champions League, for example. Um, this is a big amb ambition to play with Park in the Champions League. And um, we must work hard for it. Uh, you had a serious injury in your arm, uh, the game against Ofi. What was this period of time? How did you feel it, being not it's able really, to play? Uh, it's really despite difficult. Despite your legs are uh, healthy. Yes, it's really difficult because of this. Uh, I could do everything with my legs, but I don't have power in my arm. So <laughs> it was really frustrating because uh, I cannot, I, I cannot watch games and do, uh, do nothing. Uh, I have to do also something, but I couldn't do nothing. So. It was a really frustrating time, but now I'm happy that, I, uh, that I'm back and uh, I will try and work hard to, uh, to finish good with the team. Are you, do you feel ready now? Yes, I think uh, with my legs, I'm physical really good, uh, with the results were really good also. So um, now this week I have to do a little bit more power for my arm and then I will be uh, ready. 
different coach, new start. Uh, what has changed? What do you believe? I think uh, the trainings uh, have, have changed. Um, we train uh, more tactical, mm -hmm. um, with more passes, for example, so he can explain more. He takes more the time uh, for the players. Um, there are two, diff two different trainers. One is training for the training, and the other uh, wants to learn um, and stop the training more time. So mm -hmm. maybe the inten intensity is a little bit lower, but we're learning uh, more from the trainer by his words and everything. The remaining uh, goal of the club is the first place uh, at the playoffs. What must Pauk do in order to achieve this goal? I think uh, we must play with confidence first uh, because we proved that we are, have a good team and we proved that we can win from everybody. But um, uh, we have to play with concentration. Uh, everybody has to know what we, what you have to do. So um, if everybody think of this and only of Pauk and win the playoffs, we're going to win it. Do you believe this year's playoffs are uh, harder? Are going to be harder from the previous seasons and why? I think uh, the playoffs always uh, is hard because um, because it's the end of the season also, mm -hmm. and everybody wants to win. So everybody is going to be, uh, be motivated. Um, they're going to be more motivated to win from Park, for example, because we are normally a bigger club than than the other teams. So it's going to be difficult. Yes. What is your personal motivation? My, per enough, uh, my personal motivation is like I want to uh, come back really, really, really good. Mm -hmm. And because before this injury I had a couple of games in a row and I was playing for myself personal, I think, really good. Let's uh, speak to for something else. Your mother is from Curacao and uh, your father is from Curacao and your mother from uh, Aruba? Is that no, the, no, the my father from Aruba and mother from Cura okay. Curacao. That sounds yeah. rather exotic to us. Uh, do you have memories from Caribbean growing yes, up? Yes, yes, of course. A lot of uh, memories. Uh, it's like a small islands, for example. Uh, really nice. If you, maybe you want to go there one time for a vacation. But it's really nice uh, to go there. I have a lot of family there, so in the summer normally I go there. Your favorite place is there or Amsterdam? It's a difficult question. I, lo I love both. I love both because the most of the time in my youth, I was in Amsterdam mm -hmm. and I have a lot of friends there. So um, I have my, uh, my friends are in Amsterdam, for example, but my family is more in uh, the Caribbean. So if I choose for my family, I go to the Caribbean. If I choose for my friends, I go to Amsterdam. Uh, back at 2006, you were called uh, for the first time the, uh, at the national team. Now you are here. How do you imagine your life in 10 years from now? It was, it was, um, it's gone quick because I remember when I was young and all the old uh, players like uh, Davids or Stam, and even later with, in Spain with Morientes, Angulo, they were saying like, um, you know, enjoy every day because at the end it, the, the life is going quick and you don't uh, notice it. And now I, uh, I remember these words and it's going really quick. Um, because I can remember uh, uh, the World Cup, for example, 2006. Mm -hmm. And now we are already in 2015. So <laughs> the time is going really quick and you have to enjoy it and try to do, to do everything for it. And what will Maduro do in 2025? <laughs> I don't know, but I will be, I like to be a trainer one time or, or a manager because I like um, how trainers think and what the ideas of, uh, of uh, of a trainer, so I think I will be a trainer or at least something with with football because uh, without it I can't I can't live I think. Talk about football in general. Tell me your top five active players. Okay, number one Messi, mm -hmm. number two Cristiano, number three Robert for me, number four Slatan, and number five um, maybe I forget Neymar I think. 
Okay, okay. Now tell me your top five teammates. Robin first, I think. Slatan, uh, Tre Silva, I think. He's a really good player. Um, Snyder also in his best moments. He was really good. And um, wow, play with a lot of good players. Um, Let's say now uh, also uh, Rakitic because he's now in uh, Barcelona and uh, I played uh, with them one year. Your top five uh, managers? Generally, in that, in oh, that, okay. that you have worked with? Um, number one, I think uh, Guardiola. Number two, Mourinho. Number three, Luis van Gaal. Um, number four, I think um, Klopp from Dortmund, I like, and uh, um, I can also say like uh, Fer Ferguson, can I say this also? Oh, he stopped also, but okay, he was really good uh, manager. And your top football memory of all time? Oh, of my of my, for myself? Wow, um, I have to think of it. Maybe, um, I think the World Cup, when I played against Argentina in uh, 2006, it was, um, for me, maybe the, the highest feeling you can get as a soccer player. Playing World Cup against Argentina, and um, yeah, it was a nice feeling, really nice feeling. I never forget that. At your house we saw that you had uh, frames from Mohamed Ali, Nelson Mandela, Yes. your role model, your icon. Life. Yeah, I think uh, the most it was Mandela. I think uh, because because we spoke it before the positive energy. Um, he never gave up. Even he was in jail for 27 years, innocent, and he didn't give up. So imagine if you are 27 years in jail, innocent, for doing nothing, and you still have the power to come back. And yeah, that is uh, like a big idol for me. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the city. You are here uh, one year and a half. Describe us uh, Thessaloniki for Hedvigis Maduro. I think uh, it's a really nice city. Uh, the people are really kind also. And uh, especially now when the sun is shining, uh, it's really nice to walk. Uh, that's why I live also in the, in the center more, because I like to walk. and. Uh, now it's even nicer uh, um, to walk or take a coffee also. Uh, so you have, uh, it's a really nice city. Tell us your favorite place. Give us a sneak peek about your uh, reality, your everyday life. No, I like the boulevard uh, where we were walking uh, before. So uh, I think this is for me the, the most relaxing uh, point of um, of Thessaloniki. How important is the general environment and the city for a football player and his decision to come or not come? To it's team? really important. It's really important because uh, you're more time uh, home. For example, we train. Uh, if you train one time, uh, you're only in the morning. You're gone, and the other hours you're home or uh, you're in the city. So you must feel really good first, and then you can play good. If you don't feel good outside, you cannot play good because you don't feel good. And you think of a lot of things, so um, this is the most important thing uh, for a soccer player, I think, also. And last, Amsterdam, Valencia, Sevilla or Thessaloniki? Oh, you cannot compare the cities <laughs> because, for example, Amsterdam don't have uh, sea. You know, at, uh, okay, Holland have sea, but Amsterdam not. So if I look at the two, two cities, Valencia have sea and Thessaloniki have sea, I prefer the seaside because I like uh, the sun and to relax and see and watch the sea. So it's difficult. Uh, <laughs> it's different. You cannot uh, you cannot uh, compare city with city. But I start to to love Thessaloniki more and more. That is uh, for sure.